Hello and welcome to all of our employees, partners and customers to today's office hours. My name is Philippa Lamerton and I'm the ACH lead for the Advanced Competence Hub. For anyone who hasn't attended an office hours before, these are sessions designed to be open discussions with IFS leadership where employees, customers and partners can ask questions directly, lasting 30 to 50 minutes, followed by a Q&A session. Today, we are joined by Alex Reed, VP in the Service Management Business Unit, who will be discussing IFS service management. Please post your questions in the chat section and we'll hold the Q&A till the end of the presentation. Over to you, Alex. Thanks, Philippa. Um, so, hi, everyone. Uh, thank you for taking time out of your Friday to, uh, to well, join me in my office. Um, I think like everybody, the office has actually been the home for the last year and a half or so, so welcome to my office. Uh, Philippa has invited me here to spend yeah, 30 to 50 minutes. I think it'll probably be about 30, and I, I do want to take some time for, for your questions and for some discussion. Um, she invited me to talk about my favourite subject, um, which is field service, which probably is something of an omission, but never mind. I wanted to talk before I, before I go any further, I wanted to talk a bit more about what service is. And to me, it's not an industry on its own, um, although IFS organizationally does treat it that way. Um, every company and every organization that I'm aware of has service to some degree. It looks after its customers, whether that's retail or financial services, where clues a bit in the title. Um, then the more common ones that we work with, with who have large field forces like utilities, communications and telco, and more recently manufacturing. Um, service is the most powerful tool that those companies have and those organizations have to differentiate. And also very helpfully, it's the most accessible to newcomers. I kind of when I first started in this industry, I was a little overawed with all of the terminology that people used. But very quickly, I realized that I, like all of you guys, are the recipients of another company's service every day and probably several times a day. And we know what good service looks and feels like, and we know what bad service looks and feels like. So <clears throat> really Service service spans across all of the verticals, and that's what I wanted to cover here. Why is management software different? I get this question an awful lot in various different guises, especially working for, for IFS. My, this, my response to this is a little glib and I hope everybody understands, but nobody ever that I've heard of looks to differentiate based on an order to cash process or a holiday request process. All of those things are fundamental to a company, but they're not how they differentiate. The service is how they differentiate. So, differentiation. I mean, if we think about, I'll use an example we probably all have. Um, buying an iPhone really isn't an, a, buying a product anymore. It's not even a service if I go and combine it with buying Apple Care. It's an experience. It's every time I pick up the phone and see things are uh, seamlessly updated, when I boot up my Mac and see that I've got the photos that I took synced over there, and more pointedly, when I was a bit of an idiot and put my um, my iPhone in my back pocket and then proceeded to fall over on a slipway and turn it into a curved iPhone, it's the service that I experienced as I um, from from Apple as I dealt with that. Very very quickly, um, I was able to speak to somebody in Apple. I would, the the next day, even though I was on my holiday home, they managed to get me a replacement, and here I am now an advocate for Apple, talking to you guys. But if you think about it, you know, Apple aren't a customer of IFS, but think about it in the context of somebody who, of an industry where we do serve. Um, we have several telecommunications companies who are customers of ours, 
um, Altel, Vodacom, just to make, name those, and more recently Deutsche Telekom have signed up. If you think about the experience, you know, how you view your interaction and how you view an experience with a with a telecoms provider, how do you how do you judge that experience? Do you judge it based on the fact that you've got one gig broadband or the fact that I'm doing running a webinar and um, for some reason I can't actually get the internet access that I want? Um, it's not that, not from day to day. The opinion you form on the company and the relationship you form with that company is how quickly you can get an installation appointment, how well you're communicated with once you have that appointment up to that appointment, how big the appointment window is. Are you going to have to stay in all day to get this installation? And do they turn up on time and do a good quality job and they're not rushed? And do they have all of the right tools that they need to? Those are all services that we help. Our, the IFS software helps customers and helps telecommunications companies to provide but it's an experience that they, that we're really talking about and that experience customer experience is how our customers differentiate by the way that whole thing is um is repeated on st on, uh, on steroids when you have an outage if you've got no broadband the immediate thing is that's how you're judged that's how i judge virgin media how you judge your telco company how quickly they fix it, how quickly they're onto it, how quickly they can assign an engineer and how quickly they can resolve that problem. All of those moments of service, are how IFS help our customers to deliver service. And so I was just one of the final point I want to make sure everyone's clear on is people use IFS's service management software to differentiate from their competition which means that we need to help, that software needs to be flexible enough to help them to differentiate and not, and uh, to differentiate from the competition. the cow path they want to build the highway they want to be changing the way they do business and something important i will come back to later is we need to be talking to them about their readiness to transform because installing software or it was spinning up an instance of ifs in the cloud isn't going to transform a customer's business on its own that needs to come with much more and one size very definitely does not fit all there's no single way of the best way of doing service you know, otherwise there'd be no differentiation we you know, deutsche telecom wouldn't be uh, differentiating from its customers or differentiating from its competitors it needs to be different and the products that support it need to be different and what that means for us in ifs consulting and for our partners and also for the customers is that design and confirm prototype phase is really, really important. Understanding what the objectives are and configuring or decide, working out how you're going to configure the IFS product to meet the needs is crucial. And finally, talk about readiness for transformation. It's not just is this a transformation, but are you ready? Um, have you thought about the business model that's needed to support this? Have you thought about how the business, the organization needs to change? And do they need help? Um, IFS in itself is not a business transformation organization. Um, we can certainly introduce people who are good at that. And that's definitely a conversation to have. A lot of our partners are. We're a software company with great experience in service management and we can bring people in from a transformation perspective. I did say this wasn't going to be a product pitch, um, and I'm trying not to, but I am going to leave the magic quadrant up there. It's, it is it is a really impressive achievement from IFS, again, to be the furthest top right in the, um, the Gartner magic quadrant. I do want to 
quickly talk a little bit about the products, but I am I promise to not I'm not doing a product pitch and I'm not the right person to do that. I will say, you know, just picking out a little bit, our, our FSM product, field service management, is an extremely you know, some of the highlights there, it's an extremely broad product product. It does way more than some of the other vendors and former leaders in the in the Magic Quadrant did. Um, it's stronger in inventory, stronger in reverse logistics, does has capability in desk space repairs that probably none of the other vendors here do. But also it's its flexibility. Um, we can support a lot of different models. As I've mentioned before on the earlier slides, best practice doesn't just come out of the box. Um, you can't just buy a piece of software and expect to inherit industry best practice. We've got customers like Laley who service farming equipment genuinely out in the field. Um, Eltel and Vodacom and Deutsche Telekom as um, all as telcos. We have Electrolux, very different model again. And even IMAX, who whilst we're still servicing technology for them out in the field, their model is very, very different. You imagine the, the impact of having an outage of an IMAX screen at, some, at a, a big film launch event. Those, everybody's got slightly a different business model and a different objective, but they're all using FSM, which is a a reflection on the flexibility that it can of the, that that product can bring. PSO. What I'm going to say about PSO probably reflects on my statement earlier about being a field service geek. Um, PSO is probably the fav my favorite uh, piece of software that IFS has in, in, in this domain. Um, it's an extremely powerful scheduling engine, perhaps the, the most powerful schedule engine, engine out there in the world. Uh, 10 years ago, when I first came to this industry, I was impressed by the AI that allows us to assign and optimize 25,000 jobs to 3,500 technicians in just in the space of a few minutes. But that was 10 years ago, and, and PSO goes way, way further than that. It does continual um, online re real-time re-optimization. It's got a fantastic uh, scenario explorer, what-if scenario explorer called WISE that I haven't seen in any other product. But it does mean, and some important things, if you've got a really powerful scheduling engine to get the most out of it, like with any engine, is to get the most out of it, you have to know what you're trying to optimize for. And that's one of the subjects I'll come on to in the later slide. Clevest is, uh, I'll touch briefly on Clevest, which is a, um, a, a fantastic addition to our company, the most recent in the field service space, um, really giving us some strength in depth in utilities. And we've, we've got our first customers now that are gonna use PSO combined with Clevest to really enhance that power uh, and drive, their, drive both the utility strength and the scheduling engine and get the most out of those. But I've put cloud into the background and, and IFS cloud is, is really where it's all going. All of these products are gonna converge into the, um, converge into the common platform in IFS cloud so that customers can take all of the best pieces of what we have. It's, this is a platform that's get, getting significant investment and the power all there in one place, the power of having it all in one place means that we've got reduced in, uh, integration points and reduced um, points of failure. If you think about how a, a typical service set of applications might work, all of the, you may have to go and get information from an inventory system, information to the scheduling engine. It's all in one place in cloud. And that's something that I think is really exciting. So I was asked to talk a little bit about my thoughts on ingredients for a successful project. And my first point really is knowing and understanding where you are right now and where you want to be. What is the real problem we're solving? What's the business case? What, what business case do we push, put to our execs to, so, um, to solve the problem? I have seen some times when the, exec, the executives have signed off a business case to achieve one or two goals. But then when we get out into the operational things, we start to begin or the conversation shifts and we start to try and solve other problems and different problems and forget about the forget about the reason why the project was in separate, was funded in the first place. It's important to make sure that we don't lose sight of that. 
knowing how success is going to be measured. What KPIs are we going to drive? What are we going to improve? And what's the baseline right now? I put up a few here. All of these are potential KPIs that we could, that IFS and, and other um, service management products could, could help to improve. Trying to fix all of them and optimize all of them is, is the wrong thing. Picking the ones that are the most important to that customer at the time and focusing on driving those, that's the most important thing. And understanding the magnitude of change. If you're going from a paper and pen and, and Excel scheduling, you may not get there and may not get to where you want to be in the first step. It may take a journey of, a se of several steps. The next one. I think this is really important. It needs a good guide on one side, and it need um, that can someone who knows what the product can do and what it can't do, and what also things it could but it shouldn't. I think on a few occasions in the last few years, I've been working with customers, and, and absolutely, back to my point on flexibility, we the product can do it, but it's not a good idea, and we need to be need somebody on the on the who knows the product well to guide the customer and explain what it should and shouldn't do. We also need somebody, need both sides to have some of the mental agility and flexibility to say, yeah, okay, well, I wanted the customer from the customer side, I want to achieve this. Uh, from, the, from the product side, it doesn't work exactly that way. But how can we meet the overall goal, even if, the object, even if the, the solution that the customer had in mind isn't quite the best way of doing it. So we need to have a, willing, a willingness to listen on both sides and a recognition that experts don't know it all. Um, I've probably learned some of my most memorable lessons learned with customers have been when I've pushed back and said, no, I don't think that's a good idea. And the customers pushed and explained to me why why they needed to go live with a scheduling engine even if they hadn't loaded all of the data why the answer by the way on that one was they didn't have anything better that any any step forward was a step forward from them and focus on what's really needed okay. the aim shouldn't be perfection or nirvana that there will be a setting out in the when we put the original business case together that this is where we want to be but recognize that perfection isn't going to be day one what we should be targeting when we go live on day one is better than today um, that may not solve all of the problems but it will solve enough and move us forward and one of the most interesting conversations i've had was with a guy called rudy gothard um, from spencer technologies in north america i've spoke to him earlier this year and a couple of insights he shared with me uh, one of those was that a lot of the complex things that they he and his company asked us to build into the product or to the Spencer for, for sorry the solution for Spencer technologies they're actually in the process of taking out and the thing there were a whole bunch of new things they realized they did need after they were live so what Rudy and the Spencer team have done have used the savings from that initial implementation. He said, well, we've made some savings. Let's use those savings now to fund the further improvements to make the product better, make the overall solution better for Spencer. And I think that's really, you know, that's smart and it tells you a story. It tells you a story of a customer going live, getting benefits straight away, which is what we all want to see and then using those benefits to and un, using the knowledge of, the, of that product to um to get more benefits so we're live right we've got live we've had a successful project or even achieving the kpis that we said that we were going to achieve um what I see very often is a conversation with a, with a customer a year or two years later, and great, the CFO is happy that you've we've gone live, happy that we've achieved the benefits that we wanted. But what's your next trick? Because I still want CFOs still want savings next year. Um, yeah. In addition, the business objectives of 2021 are not going to be the same in 2022 and 2023. 
And even if they are, the business environment that our customers are operating in are going to change. So what that means is what was optimal then isn't going to be optimal now. But there is some good news. And the good news is the product flexibility that I talked about earlier um, and the fact that the product can do an awful lot. Customers don't always. And very, I don't think I can really name a single one single customer who has gone live and is using the full benefit of everything that FSM and PSO can do. It can always do more. And even beyond that, it can be configured. The PSO engine can be used and configured to adapt to the changing data, to the changing um, organ to the changing data, to the changing business objectives. So we can help with that. On top of that, and I kind of hinted at this with um, with IFS Cloud, we're continuing to add every six months product enhancements in there. So what IFS can do now and what IFS can do in six months time are gonna be very different. Every six months, every year, we're gonna be adding new functionality to there. So there's the opportunity for customers who've already signed up to take advantage of those new enhancements. But what I would really advise here as well is that we work with our customers to ensure, and maybe I shouldn't have used success, IFS success engagement, that's the label that we IFS are putting on it, but really this is about having an ongoing relationship with the customer, not just selling, selling them the software, going live and running for the hills, but working with that customer to make sure that they continue to get that, um, that benefit, continue to go up the first S curve, identify the objectives and see where they want to be in the next year and continue to see the growth and the benefit from the software that they've uh, invested in. And so I think I'm coming up to 30 minutes. Where can you get more help? Uh, if you want to understand more about field service generally, Sarah Nicastro does a fantastic podcast um, called The Future of Field Service. She interviews IFS customers and other many other respected people in the industry. Some really important, or really interesting insights there shared from the business. I would wholeheartedly recommend signing up to The Future of Field Service and what Sarah does. IFS Academy, if you're a partner out there or if you're a consultant out there that isn't in service management but wants to be, get into the Academy. Uh, we've put a lot of effort in the last three years in improving the training courses and improving the certifications. Go there as a great, as a great starting point to go find out and learn more about these products. Um, it's certainly the first place I'm going to be looking when partners are coming knocking on my door is to say, well, where have you been? What level of certification or training do you have so far? If you're a customer or a partner or a consultant who's already using and working with the products that I've been talking about, community is the place for you. Uh, Philippa, who you saw earlier, and Lee Pinchbeck do a fantastic job of making sure that the community is a place where people can post questions, share answers all around the different products that we've got. Um, Lee, is, Lee in particular, or Lee and Philip in particular, are great at making sure if you post a question, you get it answered. Whether that's from an expert in IFS consulting or an expert in R&D, if you post a question and there's an answer, we'll give you an answer in there. And finally, in the wider IFS team, um, my email address is alex.reed at ifs.com. I am very happy to take questions, take chat, Teams chats, have a conversation. Um, as you've heard, service management is my favorite subject, um, which I say slightly tongue in cheek, but we're always happy to, to help people to grow and, and, and share the knowledge and experience that we've got, and also come across new problems, because they are always are problems are always coming up that we haven't seen before and I'm interested so if I can help you to become a field service geek like me I'm very happy to do so and that I'm hoping I haven't spent the last 20 minutes talking to myself means that I'm at the end of my slideshow and I'm going to uh, find my way 
of stopping sharing screen so we can take some questions. Philippa, I'm really hoping you're going to tell me that um, you heard me all the way through that now. Yes, yes. Excellent. <laughs> Apologies for the problems at the beginning. Um, we all know what technology is like, so there we go. Um, does anybody have any questions? Do we get anything like that? Okay, we do. Um, Kristen, I think I can't see them very well, so. Yep, I'm happy to read them out. <clears throat> so we do have um, a couple questions. Um, one would be, where can I find documentation to read in deep, like technical documentation? Um, they know about the F1 functionality, but is there a way to read more? That might even be one for Philippa, but I'll have a swing at it. The answer, I think, is um, I would go documents.ifs.com um, for the product documentation. And anything you think that might be missing, I would go to community.ifs.com. Perfect. <laughs> Right. Easy questions there's also, only. Yeah, there's also quite a bit of content right in the community. Phil herself has made a lot of it. So there's a lot of things in there, too. Um, a second question we have is what advice would you provide to a new IFS recruit for learning our world in the service industry? So should they start with FSM? Should they start with IFS cloud? What's your what's your thought? Uh, that's an interesting one. It kind of depends where you start, where you're starting from. Um, by all means, we I'll give you a couple of answers if you've just started. They, we switched the three years ago, not long after I joined, we pushed and we switched um, between the academy and I, we've switched and done FSM and PSO Essentials as a self-paced learning course on academy. Um, I would start with both of those and see which one floats your boat. Um, most people if you like scheduling, you'll know you'll know pretty soon after starting the PSO um, courses whether that's for you or not. Um, FSM is probably a little more accessible, but both are cool. I, I'd start there, and if you're not sure, if you want to have a conversation, then just reach out to me on Teams, and and we'll find some time for a chat. Thank you. Any more questions? There's none in the chat. Ask now. Although if you uh, don't want to ask now, then you're more than welcome to reach out afterwards in the IFS community. Sure. No, my, um, as I say, reach on, reach out. If you want to ask questions of me directly, that's fine. Look, the other thing I will say is IFS. We've seen us talk. You've seen IFS go out in the media talking about um, moments of service. You'll have seen me. I think a lot of people who've been on Teams meetings with me have done seen me do an extremely poor impression of uh, Usain Bolt with the uh, illustration of the level of the growth curve that we've had in service management. The SMBU is here to help. Um, Marnie Martin heads that up. Um, I'm part of her management team. We've got a lot of people we've hired from the service management industry who can help you. Well, you'll all get a slightly different view. Some of us come from different competitors, some of us come from pre-sales, some from consulting, some from partners, some from sales. But check out Marnie Martin's organization under um, the, under, what is it, the, is it one at IFS dot workplace, otherwise workplace. Check that out or just reach out to me directly and I'll point you in the right direction. Very happy to, um, very happy to connect you with the right people to help you if that's what you, if you're interested in service management. Ooh. We have another question. How can I help with answering questions in the IFS community? I belong to some groups, but I never receive questions. Good question and thank you. Yes, please help in the community. Um, with the forums, that you want to be part of so if you know PSO or FSM or apps the forums in the community have a subscribe button so you can go to the particular forum that you're interested in and if you hit the subscribe button when somebody posts a topic into the community you will get an email from the IFS community saying that the topic's there so then you can click on a link it will give you a brief description of the topic 
you can click the link in the email and it will take you straight to the topic and you can answer the questions. So yes, please do come into the community and help answer questions. <laughs> There's a lot of an amazing information in there and it's constantly growing. Any more questions? If not, then we can wrap up. All right. Happy Friday, everybody. Thank you for taking time. So I will just do my closing spiel. Thank you so much for attending today's session and bearing with us with the technical issues. It's not often we have those. Um, the session has been recorded and we'll share the link as soon as possible. May have to edit the beginning slightly, but we'll, we'll get something out there. Uh, do look out for our December webinar with Tony Johnson, who will be discussing what you can expect from IFS Cloud 21 R2. If you have any suggestions for topics that you would like to see presented, then feel free to reach out to me directly. You can find me in the community, Phil Lamerton, and you can message me in the community directly if you would like. Again, thank you very much for joining. Enjoy the rest of your day and your weekend. And thank you, Alex. That was brilliant. Thanks, guys. Thanks. Thanks for bearing with me. Thank you. thank you, everyone. And webinar.